Hi folks, welcome to Real Talk. I'm Ron Strand. We're glad that you're joining us today. Today we have a special guest. He is a Dove Award winner. He's inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, and he's one third of the iconic group, Second Chapter of Acts, Matthew Ward. And you're going to enjoy this interview because we go, we go from his beginnings into the middle, into where he, he is, where Second Chapter of Acts started, into life and into all the other things. It's a great interview. I can't wait for you to see it. If you like interviews like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can do that by just hitting the subscribe button. And you'll be notified of upcoming interviews and events at the Upper Room. Thanks for watching. <laughs> So, Matthew, thanks for being with us today. You bet. My pleasure. Did I recently see you singing the national anthem in a uh, Major League Baseball park? Yes. Really? Was it uh, where? That was, was it? June 10th, and it was at PNC Park. PNC Pits Pittsburgh. Park. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, how did that occur? Uh, my manager knew a guy that knew you, the folks. Your manager that, knew you a know, guy. One of those yeah, things. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I watched it. On YouTube. How, how did I do? You did excellent. Did for, you like the high note? Which, uh, you know you know what's funny about that? I hadn't really ever rehearsed it or anything. Yeah. I didn't know what I was going to do. Right. But I thought, I, you know, I want to communicate the song. I want to just be like all licky. And you know, I've heard like everybody do it. it. You know, it looks like, you know, three ring circus of the, I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to communicate the song, which I think I did. Yeah. And then, but when I got to the end, I went, hey, I'm feeling pretty good. As you I'm felt singing, good you know, about I'm singing. It. And when I got to that last note, I thought, I'm, I'm going for it. And when and I hit it, it, it was like, hey, my voice sounds pretty good. You did then it. I like milked it, yeah. you know, because it's like, yeah. You did. So, uh, yeah, it was, that and was just a last minute, I'm just going to do it, and I did it. And you did it, and I'm not blowing smoke, but you did it very well. And you know what, I do appreciate how well you do blow smoke. Well, so I've seen you do that. Yes. I've, and I, I blow it with the best, so. Yeah, you sure um, yes, indeed. So, hey, I wanted to talk today, and, and, you know, the folks out there know pretty much who you are, and through the intro, they, they those who don't know you know your past now. And, um, but I want to kind of explore the journey. And um, because you had a, I mean, you're one of the pioneers of early Christian music yeah. and that you came out early in the, in the 70s yeah. with your sisters in second chapter of Acts. But you, the, 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 the genesis of all that is, a, is an interesting story. And I've know, I know you've told it a hundred times, but Tell me about it. Well, you grew up where? Well, I grew up in California, different yeah. places, but right. uh, you know, moved from North Dakota when I was five. Thank the Lord for that. <laughs> it was so chilly. Um, but I lived in Sacramento for yeah. a number of years and then moved to L.A. after my parents passed away, and that's where the group got started. And you were how old when that uh, happened? Mom, when I was 10, I lost my dad when I was 12. Yeah. And uh, there were still four kids living at home. So, uh, out of how many nine, ward children? Nine, nine ward children. Yeah. And you're the youngest. I am the baby. You are the which baby. Which really explains quite a bit. It, it, yeah. it explains quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So after my dad passed away, my sister Annie, who was in the middle of the nine, yeah. she had just recently gotten married to a gentleman by the name of Buck Heron. And uh, <clears throat> so they, uh, they lived in Los Angeles. And they had recently become born again Christians. Like, right. I was raised Catholic. So I, yeah. I was opposed to it was that. Foreign to you? Well, not only was it foreign, it was I was told that if I went some other direction, I was going to rot in hell. So right? you were under the Catholic. So I'm like, uh, yeah, well, I ain't okay. doing that. You know, <laughs> I'll watch you guys and see right. how that goes. But anyway, yeah. so we ended up Nellie and I, who's just a, Nellie's just above me. Yeah. The second youngest of the nine. Um, we went and moved in with Buck and Annie. Yeah. Seventy. God, what was it? Seventy-one, I guess. Seventy. Yeah. September of seventy, I think it was. And um, yeah, so you know, we now, we got put in school. You know, I was raised in a paroch parochial school, oh, Catholic, Catholic school all the way. I mean, it was like really, and all of a sudden, public school was like very weird. So you're thrust into public school. I was, and it was weird for me because I, I was such a bad student in my early years. I flunked one year, so they they held me back. You but actually got I, held back. I got held back, and then when I went, it's like, hey, you know, <laughs> and then. Um, <laughs> and then after that, I moved into L.A. in public schools, and they're like, I was too big. You know, yeah. they're like, no, we're not going to put you in, f you know, fifth grade or whatever, or sixth right. grade. So I went right into junior high. So I went from, like, really bad at, at regular math yeah. into trying to figure out algebra. Oh, my gosh. Which was like, I might as well just be back there eating paste and, you know. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, I still can't. Here's my here's my logic with that kind of math. Yeah. Anytime you have an X or a Y and you're trying oh, to figure out the value it. of something, yeah. 
If it doesn't make a sound or you can't eat it, yeah. I don't really care much about it. Yeah, you know what I think about that too? It's like, what's the point? Yeah. Well, like, why are we use talking that in X's my, and, yeah. you know, I think I saw a question mark in there one time. So, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, well, if you don't know. <laughs> if you don't know, what do you expect me to <laughs> yeah. do with this? I always, I was thinking like, if, you know, my parents, my dad grew up in my brother's painting houses, interior, yeah. exterior. Right. And I'm thinking, I wonder if they've ever like, let's see, an X amount of gallon yeah. per square inches. So why right. over the, no, they just, you know, pay. Yeah. So I just, I didn't see the point. And why did they make us do all that? I mean, nonsense. you know, if, unless you're going to be an engineer or some kind of aerospace guy or, you know, rocket, rocket science. science. Rocket yeah, science. yeah, yeah. But, you know, anyway, I, uh, I digress. You know, there's there's a, a, a cute little story. I'll just shoot it in here yeah. real quick about rocket scientists. My sister, Annie Heron. Yes. She was talking to this guy after a concert. And she goes, well, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. And and the guy goes, well, I've actually, I'm a, I'm a rocket scientist. <laughs> he was really a rocket scientist. Yeah. That was so cute. <laughs> That's great. That's enough about me. Enough about you. Now yeah. let's How talk about. Look? Now yeah. let, let me talk about me. Uh, so, talking about Annie yeah. and Buck. And Buck was a radio guy, was he? Not, he was, was a DJ. DJ. Yeah, yeah. late sixties. Yeah. Time. And so Annie already had some music stuff going. She was in a group, a secular group, with one of my sisters, actually. Yeah. Uh, and two other guys. Uh, and they uh, they had some moderate some success. Notoriety. They were starting to take off. Right. And then Annie gave her heart to the Lord in, like, yeah. I think it was 68. Right. Uh, and Buck, Buck led her to the Lord, and yeah. he found the Lord. And he got out of radio, DJing right. and all that. But... He was like he was getting he was going places within yeah. the DJ world. Oh yeah, he, you know, Casey Kasem worked for him. Did he really? Yeah, at one point. Wow. So uh, that's that's pretty wild. But anyway, where was I going? With so you were well. Okay, so Annie's got her own musical oh, career sure. going. You and and Nelly, uh, who are twelve and fourteen, oh, right? Move in with Buck and Annie. Yeah. And uh, so, what's the genesis oh, so of the anyway, musical so collaboration? Exactly. Uh, you know. It, when Annie became a Christian in 68, she got out of the secular, you know, she just thought, I, I don't yeah. want to do that. Right. <clears throat> and uh, Buck, my her husband, my brother-in-law, bought her an upright piano. She had never really played. And she would just, she just started teaching herself how to play piano one day, just like. And so Nellie and I would come home from, from school. We'd started going to school there in LA. And we'd pull up chairs and like, Oh, listen to she'd say listen to what the lord gave me and i'd be like well, i was like yeah still not convinced of relate. all that nonsense you know it's like yeah. the lord gave you a something like you know, <laughs> right. he's not super this busy about trying language. to answer somebody's prayer in right. tibet right. you know he's going to give you him you know, lord gave me a song you know yeah. anyway i just thought that was cute and um so we'd sit down and listen oh it's, it's kind of cool you know and then one day i was like you know, i started singing with her and nelly and nelly and i started singing before started singing and that's just really where the group started just she had a couple of tunes, and we slapped some vocals on it, and, and you know we could hear things. Yeah. I, you know, I still to this day I can't read a note of really? music. Really, it's ants on paper to me. Yeah, I can tell it goes up and down. Yeah, you're right. And, sure. And, you know, some of the notes are shorter if they got dots behind them or something I've heard. Yeah, I, I don't know, but um, yeah, I don't. And I, and I have a grand piano at home, but I don't know where middle C is. You know, like I've never played it. Hey, I even know where middle C is. I know. It's somewhere yeah. in the middle. It's of in it. the yes. middle. That's yeah. that's how you kind of find it. Yeah, yeah but, I, you know, is it this one? I, this is near the... Anyway. If I had a keyboard in front of me, I'd point it out to you. You could but, go, it's, yeah. Is but, it between the two black keys? I think it is. I think it might yeah. be. Yeah. Um, but, so, you've got an incredible vocal range. Uh, anybody that knows Matthew Ward's music knows your your vocals know that you've you got this incredible range and by the way folks if you get a chance to see Matthew singing the national anthem look it up for an old guy I mean particularly hitting those hitting those notes yeah I tell you yeah, I tell you, you you did great but the point I wanted to get at so you start singing around the piano with Annie and and uh, Nellie and where do you where do you realize that you have this vocal ability yeah I mean it it took a a little while because when I was really young, like yeah. seven, eight, nine, I used to love to play pots and pans and drums. Right. And people were like, "God, he's he's going to be a drummer." You know, yeah. this guy's incredible rhythm. And then they'd hear me sing and go, "Oh, well, maybe a singer." You know. Yeah. Uh, which I'm grateful for because I've watched drummers for years set up drums. Right. And I walk in and ch check one done. You know. I, yeah. I like my setup a yeah, lot sure. better than the symbol is 14 inches yep. from my right arm and this symbol. Exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, so when did I first 
you know, it really wasn't until, well, the very first time, and I've talked about this before, but um, the very first time I realized I could sing was pointed out to me by Annie. It was after my mom passed away, so I was 10. And she took us down. We stood by the American River outside of Sacramento. Right. She took Nellie and I down for a walk, and she was showing us this uh, Christmas carol. Yeah. And she goes, Matt, can you sing this part, you know, this thing? And, Nell and Nellie, can you do this thing? And I'll do the melody and stuff. Well, I didn't know it was like counterpoint and all this other stuff. Right, yeah. And harmony, I had no idea. Just sing a diff don't sing what I'm singing. Right. So I would naturally hear major thirds and that kind of stuff. So you heard it in your head. I heard it in my head. And um, so I just started singing. She's just like, like really? when we started, that's when I realized, oh, I, you know, right. I guess I can sing. Because I knew she was like, pro she was in professional singing groups. Yeah, and sure, right. And, and she was impressed with me. So I thought, hmm, maybe I'm on to something here at 10. Yeah, I didn't know it. Right. Then. But that was probably the first inkling. And right. then after that, probably the next time that really struck home for me was we had started singing in some coffee houses and stuff, right? You know, we had our four songs and we'd not say anything and we'd sing in the church basement in the bread box. Yeah. Right. And we'd sing our songs and not say anything at all. Uh, but I didn't realize. I'm like, okay, whatever, I'm singing. But And it wasn't until uh, Barry McGuire had come over to our yeah, house. Right. And Buck was starting to produce music for different artists. Yeah. Just starting. And Barry got his name from somebody, like three different names. And Buck Bucks was one of them. Yeah. So he came over to our house. We lived in North Hollywood at the time. And uh, so, we're, you know, Nellie and I went to bed. We had school the next day. So right. Barry's there stomping his foot and out of time with the music and <laughs> yeah and just so loud and playing a 12 string yeah nothing barry did was ever quiet no matter what it was <laughs> yeah, yeah it's true um but uh buck at one point when he was going through his stuff and buck was trying to decide if he wanted to produce barry and and so after he heard a few of his songs buck's like man those are pretty pretty cool songs and he's thinking in his back of his mind i'm sure he was thinking you know my my, my family could do background vocals with yeah. your stuff and so he mentioned something about you should hear my my family sing and Barry you know Barry's like yeah sounds great yeah right oh, These here we kids. go here right. we go yeah so he comes and wakes us up we're like what oh we're coming downstairs we sit around the piano sing our tunes Barry was floored was he he was absolutely floored wow so we ended up working with Barry that was the first yeah. recording we ever did right and that's the, when we first went on the road it was with Barry yeah back in the day and that was amazing. Cause and we, this was, this, you know, go ahead and finish. No, the, the, the thing that I remember about it was, uh, you know, we worked up the tunes with Barry, had them all figured out. We had our little songs figured out. Uh, but when we came out to do our songs, and because the, the crowds were not Christian, they were like, yeah. they knew Barry from Eva Destruction, sure. and singing with the new Christy Minstrels, right. and being on the original Broadway show of Hair. Right. I mean, crazy yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he's singing about Jesus now. People are like, oh, what? Yeah, what is anyway, this? Anyway, so, so we did our bit. But the first time we sang, I remember the first few nights, I thought, wow, they hate us. Because we'd sing, and the people had never heard anything like that. Yeah. They'd be like, we'd get, da, and they'd be like, so they didn't, yeah, they they didn't, didn't applaud, they didn't, they, they, they didn't know what to think. So we thought, oh, man, we blow. Yeah. We're horrible. They're not even like, one, like you know, yeah. not even two people. Right. And then, but after we got into three or four, they were, you know, so they, they loved it. it. But that was really an eye-opener for me. That's kind of when I started realizing, oh, we're not. We're not bad. Yeah. But not in like it uh, tomorrow night we're at the pump room, you know. Yeah. I mean, sure. we're never full of ourselves that way. But you were enjoying it. At oh, that it was age okay. Were... I mean, sure. You know, it beat digging holes and, yeah. you know, right. stuff. Because I tried that too. And... You tried that. Yeah. Well, singing is easy. easy. Oh. Well, I mean, for some. I mean, yeah, for some. Some people shouldn't sing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh. So you're, you, so let's go back a little bit. So Annie and Buck come to Christ. Yeah. And, and you're living with them. You guys are discovering that you guys have this vocal talent. Sure. Barry McGuire comes in, brings you on the road with him. Yeah. You haven't yet come to faith at this point. Have you oh, no, I, I did. You did? Yeah. Whoops. I was. I probably lived with them for three or four months. Right. You know, we started going to a church, uh, uh, you know, evangelical type yeah. church. And, um, but I, I watched people for, I wasn't just going to jump in because of what I'd been right. raised to believe. Uh, so I watched and watched it. And then I realized, well, these people have something that I don't have. Yeah. So it was probably four or five months living there that, and then I became a Christian. Yeah. So before we started, I was I was a, so a what, born againer. Yeah. Right. What captured your heart? I mean, in terms of I mean, because you're coming out of parochial school, Catholic school. Yeah. And entrenched in that doctrine, 
Sure. And and so all of a sudden you're in with these evangelicals. Yeah. And I know you. You 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 don't you know you have a pretty good BS monitor in terms of you know what, what you see and what you don't like and so right. forth. So what what brought you to um, to that point of faith from totally committing I, your I think because I knew the way Annie was before yeah. she was a Christian. Right. And I saw the change in her. Yeah. But more than that, like I already said, I watched people in that church for three or four months. Yeah. Like, are these people just... I was waiting for the, ah, there it is. Yeah. It's all just a front. It's, right. you know, the others waiting for the other shoot at the ground, you know? Yeah. But it never did. Yeah. And, uh, or it did, or it was always down, however you want to put it. But... I think it was just because I was watching. Yeah. They were being witnesses. Acts, Acts 8, right. you know, you right. will be my witness. It's right. a promise. Um, so I think that's what it was, just yeah. watching watching folks and seeing the reality of, uh, in their hearts and that they were genuine, talking yeah. about Jesus. They loved Jesus. They right. were displaying kindness. Yeah. It wasn't just, you know, right. doctrine. Their life was the testimony right, to exactly. you. Right, exactly. So that's really kind of where I jumped in. Yeah. Okay, so now second chapters uh, form. Have you actually become second chapter of Acts at this point? What, pretty, what is the pretty genesis? Pretty early on. So the first thing we did was for MGM Records, I sang a solo. It was called Jesus Is. It was on my 13th birthday. Was it really? Yeah. <laughs> but at that point, I think we were called, I think we were called the second chapter of Acts at that point. Yeah. So that was really the very beginning. Is this when Pat Boone brought you guys yeah. in and, and into, into MGM and yeah. produced you guys? And they didn't know what to do with this, and we recorded a whole project that they didn't know what to do with. Really? Yeah, I've got that. It's the only test pressing of that project in existence. Is that right? And it, and a friend of mine who lives in L.A. Yeah. had it in her collection. She's like, Matt, do you want this? I go, okay. Yeah. Just, oh my gosh. Just a little. Yeah, that's a gem. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I listened to it a few times. There, there's songs on there that people have not heard. Is like my right? brother does a, a solo one. Really? With Jack, yeah. Wow. He, it's, it's pretty cool. Some neat, neat tunes. So, Matt, so second chapter just explodes. Oh, yeah. I mean, you guys, this powerhouse brother and sisters team, uh, and you were this skinny little rail kid with long hair, uh, belting out these vocals, and your, your sister's writing these incredible songs, and Nellie's bringing up the rear with the, the great vocals, and... Um, so, when we when called they, her the glue, you called her the glue. Yeah, the alto part. It's analyze alto parts sometimes. They're the craziest musical thing. They don't make any sense. They're like, yeah, oh, you know, yeah. yeah, weird. Right. But she did great. So you guys take it on the road, or did you get a? Did you you got a recording contract? Um, we did. Um, we uh, we met a guy by the name of Billy Ray Hearn, sure, who had just started working at. At Word Records, it was mm -hmm. a division. What was that division called? <sighs> Can't think of it. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Um, but then he later started Sparrow Records. Yes. And they're still around. Right. Annie was the first artist on Sparrow Records. Was she really? Yeah. And some of the others. let her go some years later because she wasn't selling enough records. Right. And but some of the others that were on Sparrow were. Was, Barry was on Sparrow, wasn't he? I don't know. Yeah, it, I think so. Uh, Michael. Talbot, I mean, yeah, and so Keith, Green Keith Green was, yeah. So. Well, he had pretty good music. I don't know that he was, was he ever on? I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know. I can't remember. He started his own record label, but he, he might have had a project out before that. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah. But there's some not notoriety in the, the yeah. artists that were in the, yeah, yeah, yeah. on that so, label. So we started with, uh, with, with Billy Ray Hearn um, out of Waco, Texas. That's and so what year are we talking about. at this point? Well, the first album came out in 74. Yeah. And that had Easter song on it. Right. Murr records. And that, that exploded. Thank you. Murr. That's Murr. 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 That's it. That was it. And uh, our first album was called, with footnotes, it was kind of yeah. a green cover. Yeah. We're all sitting there next to each other. Which one's the boy? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> that had Easter song on it. And yeah. So that yeah. that's what really took off was Easter song. I mean, that song ended up in hymnals. Right. I don't oh, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah I mean, everybody I, I, knows that song. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't think you know it, you sing a little bit of it, and people go, oh, oh yeah, we did oh, that sure. at the church bazaar, yeah. at the thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you guys are touring, and, and at some point you hook up with Phil Keggy. Yeah. Phil takes you guys, you guys tour him. together. We did a live album with him in 1977. Yeah, with, and it was with a band called David. Yeah. That was uh, your band, though. That I mean, it was, was Second band. Chapter's band. Yeah. Right. And... Um, some of the who are some of the notables in that band that you guys had? I don't know that you would know. 
Phil Gaggy. Well, sure, Phil. Uh, well, I mean, the early days before it was called Band Called David, our first couple bands were people that went on to have some second yeah. order. Those are right. a group called The Call. Yeah. And that was our, that was one of our, that was like our first band. So right. Which after band was The Call, basically. Was it, <laughs> it was really? kind of funny. Yeah, Michael Bean was, he passed away some years back, but bass player in that group. And Tim Keen and all these people. Um, yeah, so. So you guys toured pretty heavily from 74 through into no. the 80s. And 88. 88. Um, and so where did where did the where did it kind of wind down? What? Eighty eight. In eighty eight. <laughs> okay. You know, and it's so I, I kept going, Lord, are you so sure? Because in nineteen eighty eight, the year we quit, was the best financial year. Was we it ever really? Had. And I'm like, I don't think that's the Lord. Why would yeah. you be telling us? No. Um, but just kids were getting school age, and I mean, there was a lot of different reasons why we yeah. felt like the Lord wanted us to hang it up. You right. Know, so. Uh, but why would have, why couldn't it have been ninety two? You know, give us a couple give of years. Give a few more bank. years to bank it. Yeah, Things sure. Yeah. Not that it's about the money. No. <laughs> um, but it never was for us because we never made any. But right. I mean, we did okay with product sales. Yeah. That was about it. Right. We averaged. We did offerings. We averaged. We figured it out one day. We averaged sixty five cents a head. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's. Yeah, uh, we were rolling in it. Yeah. So what were we, so the kids kids are getting bigger. You guys all moved out to Texas. I mean, yeah. you, Keith Green's uh, last days ministries moved out there. Yeah, and you guys I, I actually all helped him get out there. Did gave, you? Gave him some money. And yeah. He moved. We were still in L.A. and right. we go, hey, there's a hundred acres next to us. You need to come check it out because we were thinking about. We almost bought a ten acre plot in in Southern California. Did you? Which looking back now, I kind of wish we had done that. But, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> But it was interesting time. So we, we bought land next to Keith's. He had just been there for a year or two, and yeah. he was starting Last Days Ministries and right. starting to print his little you know, pamphlet yeah. thingy-majiggy. And uh, that was, you know, interesting times. You know, we were out there with a lot of ministries. It was weird. It was like this, this hub, you know. Everybody yeah. from, you know, Dallas Home and Praise, who used to open for right. David Wilkerson, yeah. you know. Uh, Rope Cross and Switchblade and all that. Yeah, um, was was his band for a lot of years, and Dallas still lives out there. He and his wife. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of things. Agape Force was out there. Oh yeah, they were. All... Yeah. Uh, I mean, just just tons of. So tons of one of the things I think that I recall so much about Second Chapter of Acts is that your concerts were, they were very personal. You know, I think in a way that I remember <clears throat> a lot of times your sisters would call out words of knowledge and, and things like that oh, yeah. from the stage. What are some of your memories from, from that time, your best memories? of? Because a lot of ministry went on as well, right? Well, those, yeah, I mean, every night. I mean, yeah. we were, I think because we never looked at it like it was a gig. Right. Like this is, it's something that God called us to do. Yeah. And we didn't know what we were doing, especially in the early days. Yeah. And, you know, we're just like, okay, we'll do this thing. and. So we did it. So we never took any, any of that stuff for granted. It wasn't like, okay, now we're going to go out and talk about it. You know, yeah. We're just kind of like, well, Lord, whatever you want. So we would always, after the concerts, always, and some, you know, I'll get to that in a second, but we'd always, we'd finish, and we'd usually just go backstage for a couple of seconds just to kind of get your brain yeah. going. And then we'd go out and talk to people. Yeah. For, However long they stayed, you know, right. while the guys were tearing down gear and whatnot. And, yeah. Um, but I remember one one night after many years of doing this, yeah. I was sitting backstage with Nelly right before we went back out, and I said, "Let's forget about the crowds, concentrate on us, and sit right here." <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a good moment. But uh, yeah, those so could we be just, yeah. Those could be emotionally draining times. You but know? some of my favorite memories. Yeah. Trying to find Phil Keggy uh, for his half of the set, opening up the second half. Oh, of really? Set of music, couldn't find him. Couldn't find him. No kidding. He had climbed into a, a, a mic stand case and fallen asleep on stage. <laughs> Closed the mic door. Stand case. Out. I'm like, where is he, man? <laughs> I opened up. Hey, uh, Phil, you're on, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, Seriously? Okay. Oh yeah, that was a good one. 
piano strings breaking and stuff like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, whizzing right past between Nelly and I. Yeah. And he's like, duh, duh, duh. we'd hear, Whoosh. man, I, I heard it. And then I saw, whack, yeah. up against the curtain on the far side of the stage wow. was the string. Is that right? That would have put a dent in our day and wow. it whacked us. Yeah. That kind of, you know, those moments. Sure. Crashing, skateboarding yeah. with Phil Keggy and crashing on highways going oh, down yeah. mountains. And well, because you're only, a, you're a teenager. A punk, you're yeah, just man. punk teenager at yeah. the time. I mean, I was all tore up. I did concerts with like bandages and yeah. stuff. Right. Yeah, well, lots of great times. <laughs> what was it like coming off of 14 years with Second Chapter? You guys are on the road. You're doing concerts. Like you're doing 17 recording. Years. 17 years. I mean, just thought, well, as I said earlier, Matt. Yeah, I don't was, know what was that was not like, a good but I don't remember what it was like coming yeah. off of 17. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you're coming off the road for 17 years, and now you're thrust into. Were you married at this point? Did you get married? Yes. Yeah. And what year was that? 83, September 3rd. September 3rd, 83. So did you feel? relieved at the time were you feeling like where who am I did you have an identity issue what? oh yeah I went through I went through severe depression did you really oh man because I didn't know what I was going to do next or what the future looked like or I'd done that from the time I was you know 13 right that yeah was my whole right so you had no so time all of a sudden it's like they just pulled a plug on us now uh, eh. and I just tanked did was, you really oh god it was horrible for about three months I was no like, kidding I'd read the bibles I'd read the newspaper you know I pray. It was like words were just bouncing out the ceiling. Yeah. It was weird. It's the only. It's the first time I ever felt. No matter how hard I pressed into the Lord. Yeah. I didn't sense him. You didn't. That happened one other time too. Yeah. In, uh, Ninety-four when I went through cancer. Yeah. And wrote to the king. Which is another story. That's a whole. That's a great story. Well, but I want to dive into all of those, but so let, let's just talk briefly about your your solo career because you're sure. going through this depression what, at what point did you decide I'm going to get out and do a solo thing and well that was some years while we were still on the road with second chapter oh it was I had two okay. solo albums come out while I was still in the group okay yeah and so did after after second chapter though and you go through this depression are you still looking at doing some more solo oh, sure. stuff and going out on the road and I just didn't know what it looked like because I, you have to realize that second chapter was the facilitator for me to do what I did. Yeah, sure. Like I'd open up the second half with two right. or three songs from my new record. Yeah. Right. But now it's like, now it's just me. How's that going right. to work? And I, I'm not, hey, I'd love to come to your church. Yeah. You know? And that was back in the day when we still really weren't welcome to the churches. Really? Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, starting to. More. Right. But when we started, oh, man, it was municipal, civic, high yeah. school, Right. Gyms, that sort of thing. Churches? The church was slow. You got that beat. Yeah. You play them electronical yeah. guitars. Yeah, exactly. It's right there, not devil. Right. It's in the word distortion right there. Yeah. Devil. Yeah. Totally. Well, they they were very slow and oh, embracing. Now it's like God, we're like we were like. Yeah. American cheese compared to. Yeah. So you got three kids. You're raising kids now. Well, they they were in Texas. Were they all born at, when you were in Texas? Uh, they were all born in Texas. Three daughters, Megan, Morgan, and Maddie. Right. Who's named after you. Jeez. And uh, so you guys had, uh, well, let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about, you You got a cancer scare about, what was that, about 15 Nin years ago now? Yeah. Oh, 94. 94. Wow. So, uh, yeah. My, I didn't know if I was going to live or die or what. You know, wow. I had surgery, did chemotherapy, whole nine yards. Yeah. <clears throat> learned a lot about I had a misconception of what God the Father looked like because, really? because my dad was sort of, he was a functioning alcoholic and yeah. worked hard, but he, you know, <laughs> he liked his, he liked his bourbon, we'll put yeah. it that way. And uh, so, uh, yeah, where was I going with that? Uh, yeah. So well, you, you learned a lot about your image. Oh, the father heart, how God, yeah. you know, and so I had a kind of a warped perspective of, right. of God as a father figure because all of a sudden, I had this brother-in-law that was raising me, yeah. and God bless him. I mean, he—he he was he really didn't know how to raise kids. Yeah. He wasn't a father at he the time. He was not really a super great yeah. father figure to me. And I, right. you know, if he's listening, sorry, you know how I feel about that. But <laughs> and we've talked about it. Sure. But um, but going through that cancer and just burying my soul and going, you know, I could die. This could be it. Yeah. Uh, my kids coming to me and saying, Dad, are you gonna die? And I said, yeah. No, I could possible okay and they go play on the trampoline they just wanted an answer right right so um, but I just I started to to learn how God viewed me as a father and 
how he saw me as a son and how I began to look at him as a father, not just the God that I tried to please because he's all powerful and, you know, yeah. you know, uh, but because he really loves me and I love him and we have a relationship, right? Yeah. And so that got deeper Yeah. because I pressed into who he was. I pressed into his character. I wasn't just along for the ride. Yeah. You know, which I was with a lot of my faith early on. Right. At that moment, I really started pressing in and started seeing God for who he really is in yeah. my heart and in my life. and Not just as a figure, but as a character, as a personality. Yeah. And so that, that changed for me, and that was really good. Well, it's, it's in, so interesting that, you know, in God's economy, nothing's wasted, you know. Right. And so he takes you through those times, you know, the valley of the shadow of death, and uh, you learn a whole new thing. But talking about being a father... Uh, you you've you've struggled with some with things within your family. I know yeah. that you you went and got your became a registered nurse. Yeah, CNA, not registered. CNA. Nurse, what it's what is it? Certified nurses aid. Certified nurses aid. State of Colorado. And you did that because. Oh, for different reasons, but uh, my the the first reason was I watched my best friend die of liver cancer, and I thought there's no way I'm going to sit by and let another friend go and not really be able to do anything for yeah. him. So that was the main reason, the first reason. Second reason was I had a friend in California. Uh, uh, you know who they are. Uh, but uh, her husband died in 2015. He was mm -hmm. 90, World War II vet, one right. of my best friends. Yeah. And I loved to go out, out here. They live in Anaheim Hills. Yeah. And I would come out as much as I could and help her and, and help him with stuff. And yeah. So that so that's kind of why I did it too. Yeah. But the main the main reason was my youngest daughter Maddie, who's yeah. got you know some issues. You know, yeah. Uh, she's on meds and whatnot. Sure. She's off the charts brilliant. That's yeah. part of her problem. Is she's yeah really really intelligent. And uh, so I wanted to. She lived at home with us, and I wanted to be able to help her from a medical standpoint. Make sure I'm doing things right. And the meds and all the things she's yeah. supposed to be taking. Sometimes she like ah, I forgot. You know. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I became a CNA was to help her, and I did that for about four years. Yeah. Put all my whole musical world on hold for four or five years. Didn't do any concerts. Didn't write. Didn't, I mean, it was yeah. just that was an interesting. So time. that's pretty sacrificial as a oh, father man, to, was, to do that. Yeah. It was. And then just about, <coughs> I'm guessing five years ago now, you guys had another tragedy. Yes, yeah, five tragedy. years ago, December 11th uh, is when we found out. Uh, my oldest daughter, Megan, who was, uh, she had five boys, yeah. young. Uh, she uh, homeschooled, she did all this stuff. She did life really well, her married life for a good 12, 13 years, you know, and then the wheels sort of fell off her wagon. You know, she started drinking, and she was in and out of some rehabs and whatnot. And just uh, I could go some places that are pretty dark but I don't, I don't need to right now but um, it was interesting to try to watch her you know my approach was I was doing the kind of the tough love thing like well when yeah. you've been sober for 90 days then right. we can you know have more of a relationship and because I didn't want to get hurt yeah it was my thinking about it and I haven't sure. thought about it until right now but that was my self-preservation yeah. with her and my wife was just the opposite was she she was just like I'll meet you whenever. Let's go out and have lunch. And inclusive, inclusive. And people are like, well, you were a house divided. I said, no, we weren't. We totally agreed on our approaches. Yeah. We were totally, I totally understood where she was coming from. She totally understood where I was coming yeah. from. We were not divided at all. Yeah. And in the end, neither one of those approaches worked. So who was right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter. When you're dealing with mental illness and stuff. That's, yeah. So my wife has gotten, really dived into that whole the mental health yeah. issue. And that, you know, we realize that a lot of people don't understand there's a difference between mental health and mental illness. Yeah. Everybody has mental health issues. Gosh, right. some days I'm like, you know, not doing as well as I do other days. Yeah. And that's just how your health is mentally right. and how you approach it. But uh but yeah, so Megan's passing, she we we did a wellness check. She was living in an apartment. Her husband her husband had recently divorced her. That's a whole nother story of not even going to start going down yeah, that road. Right. Uh, but uh, we did a wellness check because uh, she didn't come by for whatever it was, uh, Thanksgiving and some other stuff. And we're like, well, what's going on, you know? 
that wasn't like her not to at least check in. We couldn't get a hold of her. So we had police go and, and they, they found her yeah. passed away and so in her apartment. And uh, that's, I'm still scratching my head well, over that. Yeah, you don't get over that. No, you don't, you don't even get around it. No. <laughs> well, I remember, because I didn't know that happened, and that was about the time you and Dee came out and you did a concert at the Upper Room. And uh, we were talking and I, you said something and I said, well, didn't you hear? I said, no, I didn't know anything about yeah. it. And I said, so you guys were still shell-shocked at the oh, time. That was the first concert I did after yeah. she passed. And yeah. I, I was going to can it. I wasn't going to do it. Yeah. And I felt like the Lord said, yeah. that's not what your daughter would want. Yeah, right. Wow. Well, you guys have seen, you've seen it all. I mean, you've gone through the heights, the depths. And what, um, you've got how many grandchildren now? Well, let's see. Seven. Seven grandchildren. One girl. One girl. She is my heart. Yeah. Her name Which is one's Sailor that? Rain. Sailor Rain. She just had her fifth birthday. When she was three years old, she was helping her mom cook at the stove. I said, what are you making, sweetheart? She goes, three now. Oh, Papa, I'm making empanadas. <laughs> That's just the way she was, around the yeah. same age, too. I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? She right. said, Papa, I want to be a paleontologist. A so paleontologist. Said, a paleontologist. Wow. I said, well, what's your backup plan if that doesn't work? Nope. No I'm backup gonna, plan? Nope. I'm going to be a paleontologist. She's I said, do you know what a paleontologist is? Yeah, they dig up dinosaur bones and stuff. And I said, <laughs> good enough. You know? Very cool. Yeah. She's just off the charts. Brilliant. Yeah. And great sense of humor. Yeah. And as cute as, oh, I mean, her mom's a doll. She looks like, you know, Audrey yeah. Hepburn. A bit. Right. But, uh, yeah, my granddaughter is just stunning. Yeah. So she's a well, and obviously you're a good grandfather and enjoy I do my it. best. And you like to ride a Harley. I do. Yeah. I finally bought a Harley about five, six years ago. Did you? Yeah. yeah. I've had other bikes over the years. Yeah. But and I you get out and ride quite often? Uh, I haven't ridden it this year. Oh, you haven't? Not yet. Wow. Because every time I'm gone, it's like perfect weather, and then I get home with two feet of snow. I'm like, Oh, yeah. It's yeah. hard. It's Colorado. Yeah. But it's getting to be that time of year now where it's yeah. not really going to snow much. Yeah. <laughs> so as we wind up here, any thoughts on uh, Christian music today? Where, where do you, because you saw the genesis of it, and you've seen the whole metamorphosis of it, and what are your thoughts? I think just because of where I'm at in my life, my age, uh, I used to be so involved in any kind of music. I mean, yeah. I've got a music room downstairs you wouldn't believe. Yeah. You know, JBL studio monitors. Right. And, you know, 700, I saw it. Remember, 750 I saw it. watts, you yeah. know, bi-amped, and it's right. insane stuff. But I, I haven't listened. I haven't been down there and turned that thing on probably in a year. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is not not me. I love right. music, but uh, I think I just kind of got out of it. I mean, I couldn't tell you who the yeah. who the band is right now right. that's doing the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I know a couple of the names, and I like some of their stuff. Yeah. But by and large, I don't really care for most of the stuff yeah. I hear. It's just like, I'm floating my boat. Well, you've you've researched, uh, resurfaced, or as a resurgence, I don't know what the word is, but... Uh, escaped? <laughs> escaped. No, but uh, you've been doing a lot more concerts lately. In fact, yeah. as we're taping this, you're going to be doing a concert at the Upper Room yeah. in July of with 2023 a with the whole band. That's a blast. Yeah. I'm doing a few of those this year, which are... They're harder to come by because they're expensive to yeah, do. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm not going to... Yeah. i got to pay, guys. But the folks are coming out. They're coming out. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah. And we're going to so, have a good crowd there at the... At yeah, the, I mean, I mean, COVID just about destroyed, like many, any sort of artist. Yeah. It just destroyed what I did. Yeah. I oh, mean, sure. I was, I was booked for Europe, three different countries, blah, blah, Were you really? Canned. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. But, that just uh, killed everything. Yeah, it was, that was rough. But it's coming back. It's, it's coming to resurface, back. if you will. Yeah. Yes. So it, let me ask you this as we close. Um, there might be folks watching today that, that don't have a faith. And maybe they stumbled on this. Maybe a friend asked them to watch it, somebody that is a fan of yours. What would you say to those folks that, and maybe they're struggling. Maybe it's somebody that has had a faith and they've kind of strayed. Yeah, I know a few of those. Yeah. What would you say to those folks today? Where else would we go? You have the words of life. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I read that scripture. It's like, <sighs> yeah. um, it's interesting to hear even some people that I know. I wouldn't call them super friends, but I know them. 
And they sort of turn their back on the Lord and they give me their reasons why. And I'm just like, but dude, you know, come on. You yeah. Know? Um, I would say to those that are struggling, how's that working out for you? Yeah. Um, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. That's all you've got to do. Yeah. Indeed. Once you taste of the Lord and see his goodness and his mercy to you. Yeah. I don't know how anyone can walk away from that or deny it. Yeah. It's power. Yeah, it is. Um, I would just say to anyone who's like, just, I don't know, I don't get it, I don't understand. Put your hands, put your hands. Put your hands. Put your hands in God's heart. That's right. Um, but, you know. Yeah. Put your heart in God's hands yeah. and um, call on him. Yeah. He's faithful to answer us. And that's really all it is, calling on the name the of the Holy Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one that calls me yeah. to himself. Yeah. Anything short of that is just convincing somebody to try something. Yeah. What one man can talk you into, another can talk you out of. That's true. Unless something is birthed in your heart, it won't be birthed. Right, right. And so I would just say, trust God. Trust God. Taste him. Yep, and call out. And folks, and Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Any man who hears my voice and opens the door, the door to your heart, I will come in and sup with him, meaning I'll come in and have fellowship with him mm -hmm. and he with me. And that's what it is. It's a, it's a surrender. It's like what Matt's talking about here. It's a surrender to, to Christ. I come to give you life and to give you more abundant life. And it's a, it's a journey. It's a fascinating journey, a it life really in Christ. It doesn't mean it's all peaches and cream, but it's, it's, we have a hope and a future. And that's what God promises. Yeah. Matt, thanks for being with us today. It's, it's good been to see good. you. I appreciate it. Yeah, and we're looking forward to uh, next month. I am too. You. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Be there with Odin Fong. So. Yeah, oh, and that's right. We've been talking about Odin Fong is going to open up for you. Yeah, and so we're going to be a kick in the pants. It's going to be a fun night. Yeah. So, folks, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real Talk. Take care.